Well, there we go, guys. We did some much needed work to the sand waterfall tank. Got both the waterfalls working again. And uh, you know, I'm sorry, it doesn't look a little bit better. The water wisteria in here, obviously it was crazy overgrown and we hacked that back as much as I felt like we should do at, at this time, but it still looks a little wild. So this stuff, it just kind of grows weird. Like we get some dead branches randomly that just hang out for whatever reason. Like there's a little bit still left in that one. I just felt like we trimmed it enough, um, but you know, it, it is what it is. It's probably not the best plant, but it does really fill in that space. And that's a huge space in the middle there. So I'm not really sure what other plant we could use to get that same effect. Um, if you guys have any suggestions, leave them down in the comments. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done to this tank. We have a problem of uh, all of this waste that just accumulates. It accumulates down here in the white sand as well. All of that stuff is from the Siamese Algae Eater gang that we have in here. There's like, I don't even know, 12 of them maybe? Maybe there's more. They're just super skittish for whatever reason. That's not something that's typical with Siamese Algae Eaters. Not sure why they're doing that, but uh, they're back there, they're hiding somewhere. Um, but all of their waste just ends up, it seems like, in the sand. That's where you see it. You can see it if you really get down and look at the substrate. I've kicked this stuff up so it's a lot cleaner on top. Whereas over here in this corner, you can see just all that buildup. And that's in part because the flow in this tank is really poor. We just have the pressure from the water that comes out of the two waterfalls. And it's not a lot of pressure. So it's not enough to really circulate the water. I do have a skimmer that hangs out in the back here. It's obviously totally choked out from all of the plants up here. So it's not really working like it should. Not much can get past this plant mass, but it's something. So I don't know, we could move it and we could put it over here up close, but then it's just an obvious thing that you see. And we already have this really obvious thing that you see, which is the CO2 diffuser. So uh, we're gonna dive in and talk everything about this tank. I just wanted to give you guys a recap on what I just did there maintenance wise. And so we're gonna talk about you know how the waterfalls work, all that good stuff, and exactly what this whole system is and what it requires from me to keep it looking the way it is. Let's start off, of course, with the tank, just in case you happen to be new and don't know already, all of the tanks that we have down here, pretty much everything, is a water box aquarium. So these are, all three of these, are the 3620. So we got three feet across, and I believe that second metric is 20 deep. So think of this as like a really big 40 breeder, kind of, but it's taller. So I think these things hold about 50 gallons. I think this is one of the best dimensions for an aquascaper's tank, just because you have that depth. We know that that's really important. We can do stuff like this, where we can have trees in the front and trees in the back and create that illusion. But then also, it's a little bit better than a 40 breeder because because you get the extra height. And of course, you don't have a plastic rim or anything obstructing your view. So I love these tanks. They're fantastic. The stand is a super simple black stand. It comes with the tank if you want, or you can buy these separately on Waterbox, of course. And uh, my hands are wet, so <laughs> it's making it a little difficult. But you can see it just pops up, and we have all of our equipment down here. It's not nicely put together or anything. Sorry about that. Uh, but we just have a big, huge power strip down here that feeds everything. And this is the area where all three of these tanks get fed their electricity from. So we got, you know, CO2, we got our timers and all the, all these other things down here. We'll get to those individual pieces in just a second, but uh, you know, that's, that's the stand. It's super dirty right now because I haven't cleaned it in forever, but they clean up nice. The lighting on here is an ONF flat one plus, and it's the pendant style. So we have the flat one plus over here, their newer kind of freshwater version. Uh, we got the same thing over here, but it's the pendant obviously. So we have it strung up here. It has a this little bar thing, obviously to hold it up above the tank because it doesn't have any sides on it. And I believe this is like a two foot version, like 24 inch. So. Uh, yeah, that's right, because this is three, that looks like it's two, um, and that's, I don't know, I just got a smaller one and I thought, hey, it, it's probably, it's plenty of light, these fixtures are super, super strong, um, I probably only have this thing on like 50% or something like that, maybe even less, because they're so strong, and it's more than enough to do this tank, even at this depth, so uh, we don't have a ton of stuff growing down at the substrate, we'll talk about plants 
in just a second, but it's just a really nice, stylish looking light. Um, it doesn't have any fender or anything in front here to block like what you would get from the light as far as glare or anything that can sometimes be a little annoying but the way that these leds are positioned or maybe it's just the type of leds or i don't know what but this thing does not bother you when you see that light when you're looking directly at it so that's kind of cool and since we already kind of looked at this let's just go ahead and mention the co2 so we are doing co2 on all three of our tanks it looks like except for the one on the right which is that tank but that's okay because that, that thing is a project and a half right now um, but we have the three-way regulator here the three-way bubble counter as well so we can see how much co2 is going in and we are running it in this tank from kind of a novelty right like we probably don't need co2 in this tank but it certainly is helping you can never go wrong with adding co2 guys so we just have the just a super simple diffuser down there in aqua rio i believe it is and it's bubbling co2 up and then it's just accumulating in that corner which isn't ideal but there's just no better way to do it at the moment because again we don't really have that much flow in this tank so i could do a much better job at distributing that co2 across if i really wanted to but i don't know everything has worked out kind of okay since we set it up that way let's hit the substrate in the plants before we talk about the obvious thing that probably you came here to see which is the waterfalls so uh, plants we just have some simple stuff we got some crypts that are sprinkled throughout uh, i didn't really do much as far as substrate plants went i just never really got that far for some reason we do have some s repins in here that has finally started to propagate itself um, it's taken a long time though i recently just moved this piece out from over there to try and help fill it out but i mean we could certainly just get some more plants and fill it in if we wanted to have that instant look it's just something that i wasn't really focused on obviously we're focused on the waterfalls. I can't really remember what exactly the substrate is. It's probably UN Contra Soil, the black variety. This looks like it's also the larger granule size. I believe that's what we put in here, um, but it looks a lot like it could also be fluval stratum, so not 100% sure. Oh, and then I guess, you know, we do have some Monte Carlo and some other random plants that are just stuffed into certain places on the rocks. There goes some of the, uh, the fish that I told you were in this tank, they're already gone, okay. Uh, but we do have some plants stuffed into the rocks. We got some up here on this ledge, and mostly that's because it helps direct the sand into the hole that it needs to go into. So I think with that said, we'll just start talking about the waterfalls, guys. So a long time ago, I made a video, the first one on a sand waterfall, where I showed exactly how to build the PVC structures that create the waterfall. So I'm gonna put a link for that video so you can see the intricate detail of how we made them, and I'll timestamp it so you don't have to go and skip around the video and find it, okay? So that'll show you exactly what these things are and how they work. Basically, we have a pump, a like an Eco Plus power head that you might be able to see, maybe not, it's not the skimmer, but there's a pump back there that's plugged into a PVC structure that has a hole where the sand ends up and then it pushes it up through an output at the top. What really makes this whole thing work is the input of this is not just a normal T, okay? If that was the case, then the sand would just be blown out the top, the water would find the path of least resistance and just be blowing everything straight up. So what makes it work is that there's a little piece of plastic that's at a 45 degree angle that's inserted into the T and it has a little gap underneath it. So when the water gets pushed through it, the velocity of the water increases at that point and then creates the suction and pulling the sand down through the system and then back out the top. So again, that whole process, how to make that and everything about it is in that original video where we make the inner workings of this and there's a link for it again in the description so you can check it out. The hardest thing about these waterfalls, once you get them made and you make all the parts correctly to get them to work, is keeping them running smoothly, okay? And so that's the reason why we have some of these areas plugged up. It's because there was just natural paths for the sand to escape. In order for them to work perpetually for forever or even for a very long time, several, several months, you need to have like 99.99999% of the sand 
end up in that spot, the hole that sucks it all up. So if there's any small leakage, then your waterfall is gonna run dry, okay, <laughs> metaphorically speaking. So that happens sometimes. I mean, obviously with the plants growing, it brings up the whole fact that they can grow and cause the waterfalls to not work. I actually had to get in here and remove a little bit of the Monte Carlo because it was growing across here and causing problems. So there is that as well. The structure that the PVC inner workings are surrounded by are this Suryu stone. So I've used real rock before. This is actually not real rock. So this is faux Suryu stone. It's in like an epoxy resin. They're plastic. They have little holes in them. They fill up with water and it's made by Current USA. So if you want to try and make one of these and you want to go this route, whereas you're not using real rocks, then we'll have a link for that in the description. Trying to make these sort of things with the real rocks that are heavy is, I think, a little bit harder. This was still difficult to do. It wasn't super easy because we were using lightweight plastic rocks, but I think it did help me out quite a bit. And it's super realistic, like that's a fake rock right there, and these two are real, so uh, everything else is, is not a real rock, I believe. Certainly all the parts of the main waterfall is that faux rock. I just had to put a couple small real ones in there just to help kind of create a little bit of a crater before the holes of the waterfall. Otherwise, we had some sand slippage. I don't want to disturb anything, so I'm not going to even move this rock, but this is just a rock that is placed on here uh, to help direct the sand. So if it wasn't there, you'd see just like black PVC with sand coming out of it. It helps kind of make it look more realistic, and then it also deflects any sand from rolling off the side here you can see where it used to be doing that and then likewise we have another really small rock that is blocking that one off our waterfall on the left works really really good and I put this extra rock in place just to kind of create a little break there otherwise it was just falling straight down and it didn't really look as good um, and this one works pretty good as you can see it kind of has this intermediate pace to it like now it's picking up and then if we look at it for long enough, it'll slow down there. And that isn't because there's not enough sand getting into the hole, there's a constant supply of sand. It's just the nature of this one. I think it has to do with the velocity of the water that's being pushed through our PVC pipe in there. So no matter what happens, if you are able to construct the waterfalls, they still might not be perfect, but I mean, that's okay. That's just the realm that you're in when you're doing stuff yourself. I've battled with a lot of problems with this tank over the time that it's been set up. We went through a period of having like really bad bacterial film on here, again, promoted because we don't have a lot of water flow going on, uh, but was able to get over that with just patience, some hydrogen peroxide spray, and then of course the skimmer really helped out a ton. So I really recommend skimmers for um, planted tanks in general. I'm starting to use them a lot more. There are some floating plants up here, some sylvinia, just because, uh, and we kind of talked about all the plants, guys. Um, if you're looking for a good place to get plants, check out Boost Plant. We got a code, Aquapros BP, gets you 15% off plants, as well as a general discount code. All that stuff is down in the description if you're needing to pick up some gear. Something I probably should mention is the water changes. So because our pumps are plugged into the PVC and we don't want to remove those even when doing like a water change, I just drain the water down to about the level of where the output of this one is. Um, also because the pump that drives it is up a little bit higher than this one. This one sits about halfway. Um, so when I do water changes, I have to keep that in mind. I typically just do whatever that is, 20%, um, and then I might do it like twice in one day if I have the time just to get that extra volume. But um, other than that, I mean, this tank has been good lately, but when it was having its issues, I was constantly doing drain fills on this thing. Um, so right now I'm happy. It's, it's pretty easy. Don't really have to worry about the water changes so much just because we don't have much of a fish load in here. I don't really put any food into it. The Siamese algae eaters just eat um, stuff that's in the tank, what algae pops up and whatnot. But you can see, as we've shown, they're still capable of producing quite a bit of waste. And we do have a lot of you know older decaying plant matter in this tank as well. So something to keep in mind, something I gotta constantly work on, but it ends up not being a ton of time every week. So I think that might be it. I mean, some just little things I didn't mention. We have the CO2 drop checkers, these little U-shaped ones. They're my favorite. That helps us know how much CO2 is in there. Green, so we're doing good on CO2. Uh, we use our flipper 
to scrape the glass. These things are awesome, must have. Um, I do fertilize this tank kind of randomly. I know it isn't the best thing, but every once in a while I will spray some ferts in here. And I really just tend to use like whatever I have laying around. So this is some UNS all in one. You just give it a squirt for every 10 gallons, three, four, five, we'll give six. And that's gonna make the water wisteria or water sprite or whatever this thing is. Uh, really happy. We don't have a lot of flow, so let's get in here and <laughs> disperse that throughout the take. We'll come up with a better way to get a little bit more flow, but that is another thing you got to watch out for. If you have too much flow or the flow is directed at the waterfalls and it messes them up, so you got to think about a lot if you go down this road, guys, and you want to do a sand waterfall tank. So I think I hope that answered all the questions about this. Again, most of the information about how you construct the inner workings of it are going to be in that video, so be sure to check. That that out it goes into a bunch of detail and a you know it's cut in a way that I think is pretty easy to understand so that's a good video for you and yeah I think the the last thing to mention though is the fish so we have all the Siamese algae eaters in here they you know they're not in there for any particular reason we don't have a lot of algae in this aquarium certainly they have helped to prevent it at least that's what I like to think but they were never meant to stay in here long term they already don't really work well with this tank because they are so skittish for whatever reason they just go and hide so i think the plan for this is to just go with some old faithfuls some cardinal tetras put them in here i think they would look really good that's kind of what we did uh, with the first sand waterfall tank i think the contrast of the the blue and the red with the white of the sand looks pretty cool and they should be uh, not skittish fish that are out all the time and give us something else to look at in here that being said a sand waterfall tank in my opinion doesn't really even need fish if you don't want to go that route because there obviously is a lot to look at. These things are super cool and I know people over on Instagram are loving this thing. Um, a lot of people are seeing it for the first time and it's blowing minds but this is something that's been done for a long time. It's just not a super common thing to see and that's why I like to have one at all times. Same reason why I like to have the Monte Carlo tree tank. It's just something unique that you don't see and it's pretty sweet you know so we talked about this tank last time if you didn't see that video um, it should be the one right before this one and then guys we have this tank to get to eventually I have decided I decided a long time ago I just haven't got to it uh, we are gonna do a another avatar style tank so I got all my uh, pumice all my rock down here we got some pieces from the old scape we might use those and just kind of reconfigure things to make it a little bit easier but you know we already got a lot of hair grass in here we're going to keep that just make some changes to the substrate and uh, we'll be pulling the curai tetras out of this tank probably for something new Thank you so much for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and check out the stickers magnets cling store so you can get some cool static clings. Where are they? There's the laser fish. The lighting's really bad so we won't show those off but thank you so much for your support guys and we will see you in the next one. Hopefully it's a, well it's probably going to be a pond related video. We're, we're way overdue for deck pond stuff and we got one that we're working on so Pawn season four, five, whatever one it is, that will be coming up here pretty soon. I think that's it, guys. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.